Christmas is almost here and it's cold and there are a lot of people walking around with their shoulders glued to their ears. So my Christmas present to you is a great lesson to learn how to differentiate the shoulder girdle from the rest of the neck, the chest and the spine. And in today's Feldenkrais lesson we're going to learn how to differentiate the shoulder girdle. So please begin by lying down and take a few moments just to scan the contact that you make into the floor. It doesn't have to be very detailed but just notice how much of yourself is actually making contact um, with the floor and uh, then how much of yourself is lifted away from the floor. Quite often when you come to lying down it takes a moment for the, um, the nervous system just to accept that it's no longer having to hold you up in relationship to gravity. So quite often you'll be, there'll be parts of you that will still be very much engaged in the back, keeping you lifted away from the floor. So just take a moment to settle. And then once you've um, done that, then just notice um, how the back is making contact into the floor, how much of the back and in particular, because of the focus of today's lessons, lesson, um, what's happening in relationship to the shoulder blades. So are your shoulder blades lifted away from the floor? Are they actually released down into the floor? Um, is one shoulder higher than the other? Are both shoulders sort of drawn up towards the ears? Um, uh, and again, the purpose of these questions is not to sort of try and correct anything at this stage. It's just to give you a reference point to come back to at the end of the lesson. And then also, um, just notice how much of your arms are actually in contact with the floor. So, um, for some people, um, it might just be the tips of the fingers, the elbow, elbows, and then most of the upper arm and shoulders will be away from the floor. Um, but for others, more of the upper arm will be down, the forearm will be down. It all depends how you've chosen to place the arms and how much holding there um, is in the system in these initial moments. Now, once you've done that initial scan, and you can pause the recording at any stage if you need more time, just roll the head a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Now, it's not ideal because I'm doing the lesson in glasses, but I need the glasses on to be able to um, see you and the camera. So, you're, um, but um, you're just looking for a very easy range of motion. And, and as I said in the introduction, it's cold here in England and, uh, and consequently a lot of people are holding a lot of tension in their shoulders and that may well be reflected in how easily it is to turn the head in the one direction compared to the other, particularly if you've been carrying a backpack or something or um, bag on one shoulder and that shoulder therefore tends to be more held um, compared to the other. Now, once you've um, done that, then bring your right arm across your chest and then just begin to do um, a number of movements of just gently reaching over to the floor on the left hand side. And you're just looking to do this without any sense of strain and just looking for what's a, an easy, easy range. And Notice what happens in the chest and the ribs. Do you get any sense that the ribs are softening, the chest is softening? And um, are you allowing the head and eyes to turn to look to the left at the same time? Again, um, sometimes what I tell my students in class is to imagine they're lying on a sandy beach somewhere and that there's a very nice drink if they're on the left hand side that they're just trying to, to reach reach the to touch. Good. Now pause and then um, bring your right leg to standing and begin to do a movement of pressing down through the right foot um, so as to roll the weight of the pelvis to the left. And at this stage you're just keeping the upper part of the body just nice and quiet. So you're, you begin to press through the right foot 
to roll the weight of the pelvis to the left. And it's almost as if you can imagine the, the pelvic area, the abdominal area, is a bowl full of sand. And it's as though you're just pouring the weight, the weight of the, of the bowl, to the floor on the, on the left hand side. And as you're doing that, um, notice what's also happening with the right knee. So quite often what happens is as people press through the foot, the knee begins to move to the inside or to the left hand side for me um, at the same time as they press the foot. And that's fine, just notice if you are doing that. But then if possible, the next time, keep your knee, the, the knee that's standing, looking as much as possible towards the ceiling. So not rigidly fixing it, but you have this thought that the, as you press through the foot, the knee can stay looking towards the ceiling. And then you begin to get this really, very, I think, very interesting differentiation in the hip joint. You see, if the knee moves to the side at the same time, um, there's no uh, differentiation of the hip joint. So see if you can keep the knee looking towards the ceiling as you press through the foot. And then um, also just notice how you're using the foot. So it can be quite tempting just to favour the big toe side of the foot or press through the little toe side to lift the toes. See if you can keep the, fo uh, the foot fairly soft and, um, and solid in the sense that you're using the foot most of the foot to press down through to find this, this movement. Now, um, once you've got used to that movement, then bring your left arm out to the side. So just at shoulder height if possible, or where you can comfortably place it. And um, have the palm turn towards the ceiling. And then bring your right hand onto the chest again, and then begin to do a movement of reaching again with the right hand towards the left and then come back and try and keep the right hand in contact with yourself rather than lifting it up in the air. So you're just moving the right arm as if to bring the two hands to touch and now when I get to here that's about as far as I can get and so then I can press through the right foot to help me roll a little bit further to bring the arms to touch and then maybe you can even slide the right hand a little bit further but you just do what you can comfortably do so you, I reach with the right hand I press begin to press through the right foot I turn the head and eyes and I look looking towards the right hand as it reaches and then don't drop back but see if you can just allow yourself to transfer the weight back onto the back just nice and gently in a controlled controlled manner. So again I just reach with the right hand to try and bring the hands together and then maybe even slide the hand further. And I'm still trying to keep some attention in that right knee so it doesn't just drop to the side so it keeps looking towards the ceiling and then I come back. Now uh, this is such a nice movement to do, I tell my students, you can do it as many times as you like. Um, what hopefully you are beginning to feel, or can you feel, is this sense of the shoulder blade gliding away from the spine as the arm reaches forward. Now, once you've done that a number of times, um, you can rest if necessary, but for the purposes of the recording, I'll carry on. Um, the next time you reach with the arm, turn the head and eyes to look as if to look over the right shoulder. So instead of looking with the hand, I'm looking over the shoulder as if I wanted to see my right foot and come back. Now, try and keep the head resting down. If there's a lot of effort or contraction going on in the neck and head, there may be a temp temptation to lift the head, but you're looking to keep the head resting down. As you're looking over the shoulder, you still reach the right, right arm over to the side. So you're, uh, uh, again, just what we're doing here is differentiating the movement of the head and the neck and the eyes from the movement of the shoulder. 
and maybe you only get to here, that's fine. You just do what you can comfortably do without strain. And all the time that you're doing these movements, you're looking to keep the jaw nice and soft, the breath nice and easy, and uh, as relaxed as possible. Now pause, and then once you've done that differentiation of the head and eyes from the shoulder, then again look to the left and see if you're able to maybe reach a little bit further, feeling how the chest and the ribs soften, pressing down through the foot as necessary to help you. Good. Now um, pause and then the next time just angle the left arm a little bit higher on the, on the floor just to where you comfortably can without strain. The palm is still towards the ceiling and then again see if you can bring the hands together so you turn the head and eyes, you press through the foot as necessary to reach and then again don't drop back but see if you can just allow yourself to transfer the weight back onto the back. So again you press, you reach, you turn the head and eyes to look and then come back. And then as I'm looking towards the hand, because of the position of the arm, it's higher now than the level of the shoulder. As I look, I, my chin moves away from the breastbone. My chin moves away from the breastbone. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit of extension in the spine too. Now, if you can comfortably bring that left arm even more higher on the floor, um, so it's becoming more in line with the shoulder and then again see if you can reach and back sorry for showing my tummy <laughs> and again you reach turn the head and eyes good and then come back and then pause again you can do as many as you like of these movements uh, i find that particular sequence just uh, a wonderful thing to do just to help free up the back, free up the neck and free up the shoulders. But let's do it on the other side. So um, change legs so your left leg is standing and then um, have the left arm out to the side, bring your, sorry the right arm out to the side and then bring your left hand onto the chest and then begin to reach with the left arm towards the right, pressing through the foot as necessary to help you and then and then come back. So I'm deliberately showing you with my, my back will be to the camera so that you can see what it looks like from, from behind. So you, um, you begin to reach with the hand again, keeping it in contact with yourself, pressing through the foot to roll, to bring the two hands together and then come back. Now, um, because you can see it from this side, I just want to point out something here, is that quite often, in my classes anyway, when I teach this, what I see with some students is they press through the foot, but what they tend often to do through habit is really contract in the lower back area. Um, so they're really working very hard from the lower back. So just notice if that's your ten, ten, tendency to push through the, the lumbar area, the lower back area, and see if in, instead you can really wait for the movement to come from the foot. So as you press down into the floor, the movement comes into the knee, begins the way I sense it anyway, it may be different for you, comes down in down the thigh bone, the femur, into the hip joint. And then I'm not trying to arch my back so much, but I'm rolling, I'm thinking of the movement traveling into the floor, into the ribs on the opposite side, as I bring the two hands, hands together. And then I come back. Now, once you've done that a few times, then try the differentiation of the head and eyes. So as you reach with the left hand across, feel how the chest softens, this time I try and turn the head and eyes as if I wanted to see this heel, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it very much of it at all, but it's that, that thought. So you reach with the left hand over, you turn the head and eyes, and then come back. 
Now, again, once you've done a few of those, return to looking to the right as well. And come back. Just again, feeling each time you come back this slow transference of weight. So I'm not, I'm not dropping, but I'm really trying to transfer the weight back. And then again, you reach with the hand, turning the head and eyes, and come back. And what I really, again, feel at the end of that movement, I hope you can too, is this sense of the shoulder blade broadening away, away from the spine. And then I slowly let it come back, transferring my weight onto the back. Now, again, um, you can begin to make this a bit more interesting by taking the right arm a little bit higher on the floor. And then you, again, you're reaching the two hands together, turning the head and eyes, pressing through the foot, and coming back, and again, and come back, and then you can take the um, right arm to more or less in line with the shoulder, and now this time you can see what happens as I look towards the hands, it's more a sense of my chin moving away from the breastbone, so I get this very nice sense of extension in the back. So now once you've done that, just take a rest, notice how the two shoulder blades feel and um, how much again if the arms are in contact with the floor. Uh, I'm, I feel this kind of sense of whip in the collarbones and certainly as though my shoulder blades are a little bit flatter into the ground. And then just roll the head again a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, just to see how that is now. And then come to back to the middle. And now this time bring um, both legs to standing. And then have your uh, left arm, uh, sorry, right arm across yourself. So I'm sort of reaching around the armpit area, the left armpit area, and have the left arm over the other arm. So my two elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling. And now I begin to reach with my right hand to the floor on the left and then with my left hand to the floor on the right. And I'm just seeing, what, first of all, what I can do easily just by allowing the chest to roll, the ribs to soften, the head and eyes to roll. And then I can use the feet to begin to press now through the right foot to reach over to the left. So my pelvis gets involved, and then I can reach with the left hand pressing through the left foot over to the other side. Now just doing this a few times, allowing the head and eyes to turn, and then pause and rest. Now, again, if you need a longer rest, remember you can pause the recording. Um, but I'm going to carry on for the purposes of the, of the lesson. So now, uh, once here, um, bring your right leg over the left. So cross it at the thighs. And then have the arms down by your side. And begin to do a few movements of tilting the legs to the right. So the, to the same side that the, of the leg that's crossed over the other. So I'm tilting the leg to the right. And then I come back. Now, as the legs tilt over, you can feel how um, the one side of the pelvis comes away from the floor and the other side comes a little bit more into the floor. And it's not just the pelvis, of course. The, the ribs begin to follow, the lower back area begins to follow. I can feel this twist developing and then come back. Now, this movement is used a lot in Feldenkrais lessons, and I, I, love, I love these cross-leg movements. But it's important to know, I think, what you're doing with these movements, because they're used in different ways. Now, in many um, Feldenkrais lessons, they're used to help with extension of the spine, to get the back to arch in a more even, even way. And you can see if I just let my legs drop, what happens is there's an, an arch begins to develop in the in the back. In other words, I'm extending extending the spine. 
But really in this lesson, I'm not looking so much for a big arch in the back. What I'm looking to do is use this to help introduce um, a lengthening twist in the back. So as the legs tilt, I'm really thinking of keeping this area slightly back. So I'm not pulling it in completely, but I'm equally I'm not really letting it letting it go. So I'm keeping a sense of this area from my pubic bone to my navel just slightly drawn back so that I'm looking for more of a lengthening twist as opposed to a big back bend. So um, see if you can keep a slight sense of this lower abdominal area just back back so you begin to develop this lengthening twist and then cut back. Now pause and then if you can bring your left hand into the area of the lower back. So my palm is down and my hand is in, in the area of the lower back and my elbow is down. Now, some of you will be easily able to get the hand in further, um, so that your, maybe your fingertips are sort of coming out the other side. Um, others, this will not be so comfortable, so you just have, maybe just you'll get your fingertips under, um, and that's fine too. The important thing is not to strain, but if you can, you have the uh, hand in the area of the lower back, and then just try a few movements in this position, going carefully, of tilting the knees to the right and then come back. Now you can make this more interesting, I think, by turning the head and eyes in the opposite direction. So it becomes a twist, more of a twist. Again, I'm still thinking of keep, keeping this area slightly drawn back and then come back. and then pause and now bring your attention to your left shoulder and then see if you can begin to bring the shoulder forward towards the ceiling and then release it back down to the floor. So I'm just bringing it forward, keeping the elbow down and then releasing it back to the floor. And as, I, as you bring the shoulder forward can you notice what happens to the collarbone? What, what happens to the collarbone? So um, the outer portion of the collarbone, the outer corner, you can feel that coming forward in an arc. And I can think of, I can sense the movement of the other end of the collarbone where it attaches to the breastbone, the sternum. And now, Notice which direction is it easier for you. Do, is it easier to bring the shoulder forward? Often it is. Um, and, but then think of, as you're releasing it, almost pressing it back into the floor so that you feel you begin to get an opening or a lengthening in the pectoral muscles here. So you bring the shoulder forward and then you release it or press it back. It's just looking again for an easy range of motion. And notice, again, are you keeping the ribs very held? Okay. And so if that's the case, you may not get very much movement in the shoulder forward. But if you just check, are you, again, are you letting yourself breathe? Is the jaw relaxed? As the shoulder comes forward, do you get a sense of the ribs at all softening? Um, a change of pressure into the back? So these ribs here, where my hand is, I can really feel how they adapt or facilitate the movement of the shoulder blade forward. You can put your hand there too to see is there any movement that you can sense in the, in the ribs. Now pause, again if you need to rest and take the arm out and cross the legs, uh, whatever, please do that if you need a break. But if possible, now, now this time, think of sliding the left shoulder in this funny arm position towards the ear and then down towards your back pocket if you had one. So towards the ear and then sliding it down towards the back pocket. Towards the ear and down towards the back pocket. Okay, just nice and gently. Now, 
Um, some, one thing to check, uh, again what I tell my students, is um, just notice, so towards the ear may be very familiar to you, to you, sliding up towards the ear. As you slide it down, are you in fact bringing the shoulder forward to slide it down? Um, it's what I call the overland route. But if that's the case, can you think instead of really as though you're trying to slide the shoulder blade on your mat or floor down towards the back pocket, what I call the underground route. So instead of coming forward and down, just check are you really allowing the shoulder to slide down. Now, um, we've explored um, four directions, forward and down, and up and up and down towards the back pocket, up towards the ear and down towards the back pocket. See if you can begin to turn these directions into a circle, a circle with the that I think of tracing with the outer tip of the collarbone. And again, just notice, can you feel a sense of lengthening in the neck muscles? Do you find the head and eyes wanting to move? And what about the ribs? Do you allow the ribs to soften and then reverse the direction? Okay, nice, easy movement. And, and pause. Uh, again, if you need to rest, rest. And now begin to tilt the, keeping your shoulder as it is, begin to tilt the knees again to the right. Think you're keeping this area slightly drawn back. So it's not a massive back bend. And again, begin to tilt, and you can look in the opposite direction, keeping the shoulder fairly quiet. Good. And then um, pause, and then allow the knees to tilt to the right, just somewhere comfortable where you can hold them in position. So again, try not to let the weight of the legs pull you into a too much of a back bend or an arch in the lumbar area. Keep this back. And now think of bringing the shoulder, the left shoulder forward as if it's going to go towards the knees and then press it back towards the floor. So you bring it forward and release it back. Forward and release it back. Forward and release it back. Good. And then bring the legs back to centre. And now See if you can begin to tilt the legs carefully to the left and then to the right. To the left and to the right. And you can move the head and eyes in the opposite direction to the way that the knees are going. Go from one side to the other. If you want to make it more interesting, you can have the eyes going with the knees and the head in opposition to the knees. Quite, you need to slow it down if, that, if you are doing that differentiation. And always just checking in. The jaw is nice and relaxed, the breath is nice and free. It's a nice, gentle movement from side to side. Now, once you've done that, again, uh, you can do it to your heart's content really, um, then um, or if you need to rest, then pause. But then uncross the legs and carefully, you may need to lift the pelvis to do this, extract the arm. And then just take a moment to notice how that, that all feels. What, how does the one shoulder feel compared to the other? And then um, uh, pause and bring the legs back to standing. This time, we'll do, so we're going to do it on the other side, maybe not as many repetitions, just so you get the idea. Cross the left leg over the right and begin to tilt your knees to the left and then come back. So again, I'm not seeking to roll onto the side here. I'm keeping this part of the chest nice and soft. Just think, thinking of tilting, feeling how the one side of the pelvis comes away the ribs begin to follow and then come back. And again, I'm trying in this lesson not to use this to arch the back. I'm really thinking of a, a lengthening twist, a lengthening twist. Now, 
pause, bring the right hand if you can into the area of the lower back or where you can comfortably place it. Again, it's important to take things easy, not, not to put yourself into a place of strain or pain. And then with the hand in this position, just see, can you tilt the knees again to the left and come back. Maybe you want to turn the head to look in the opposite direction to make it again more complicated twists. And then pause and then begin to do a movement of again bringing the right shoulder forward and then releasing it back towards the floor. Now, again, I can feel this quite this movement of the collarbone, the outer corner of the collarbone is sort of coming in an arc forward and up. I can feel here the other end of the collarbone, the movement in the joint where the arm attaches to the chest and then pause and, um, uh, and then begin to slide the shoulder upwards and downwards so down to when I mean down I mean down towards the feet and then up towards the ear just again doing what you can comfortably do and then turn this into a circle so for come forward up towards the ceiling, down to the feet, down to the floor, to the ear. Noticing again, are you, are you allowing the chest to be soft? And then reverse the direction of the circle. Now pause, keep the shoulder resting down and again begin to tilt the knees to the side a few times, to the, for me it's to the left. And then pause where the legs can be just tilted slightly to the side, but without strain. And then think of bringing the shoulder forward and releasing it back down. Now, forward. As I bring the shoulder forward, I can feel my ribs. I can feel how they come together. It's almost as if, in fact, the knee and the shoulder are coming slightly closer together. So I'm folding a little bit in the middle to do that. And then once you've done that a few times, bring the knees back and begin to tilt them gently from side to side. Again, keeping the tummy slightly drawn back because I don't want this to be a big arching movement. You can begin to turn the head and eyes in the opposite direction from side to side. You can feel how, so my right shoulder, the, um, the ribs on the overlay the shoulder as I'm lying, I can feel those ribs moving around the shoulder blade or moving relative to the shoulder blade. I'm just looking again for a very easy breath, the jaw to be nice and relaxed. Pause, come back. Bring the arm out to see again how that all, all feels. Feels nice and nice and loose. See the 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 great thing about that movement. I mean, this is the genius of Feldenkrais. The genius of Feldenkrais really is um, quite often in our day to day life, our upright life, the shoulders get very sort of stuck on the on the rib cage. Again, that may be for all sorts of reasons to do with the way um, people work at computers or desks, how they carry bags. The weather um, can cause this um, sort of sense of contraction. And um, what that twisting movement does, it begins to just reverse the relationship of the shoulders to the ribs and the chest. So um, uh, by keeping the shoulder fairly fixed with that arm position, and then moving the ribs, you're, you're moving the ribs around the shoulder and um, thereby hopefully freeing up the habitual contractions that are taking, taking, often taking place. Now from here, come to lie on your front and have your left arm um, wrapped underneath yourself, um, underneath the chest.
and have your right hand in a press-up position, so my fingers are facing in the direction of my head, and have your legs a comfortable distance apart. Now, rest the head and turn the head to the, to the right, so my left arm is underneath myself, and my right hand is in a press-up position. And then begin to do, I'm going to have to take my glasses off to do this, begin to do a move to just gently pressing down through your right arm. So I'm rolling myself a little bit off the shoulder and then I'm rolling, turning my head to look over, as if to look over my left shoulder. So I roll, let my pelvis move, roll. That's it. You're just rolling around the shoulder that I'm resting on. And then pause and then do that on the other side. So I'll show you from the other side. You have the uh, right arm for me tucked under and I rest the head, rest the head and I look towards the left hand. And then I begin to press through the left hand to roll, roll myself over the shoulder. And then pause. Again, if you need to rest, please do so. This time, come back to the right-hand side. And this time, I have my right hand in the press-up position. But instead of having my left hand um, um, below the hand, uh, below my right arm, this time I'm going to have the left hand so it's above the right arm, on the floor, I mean. And then, again, begin to roll around, keeping the head resting down, just roll around the shoulder. Feels good. Um, then do that on the other side. So my left hand is in a press-up position, my right arm is reaching um, at an angle towards those um, donut balls, and then begin to press and roll yourself around the shoulder. You'll notice I'm letting my pelvis move, legs move. And then pause. And then this time, this is um, um, certainly more challenging movement. You, you may want to skip it if it's too hard, but I'll just show you. This time you have the two arms crossed effectively and each hand reaching out to the side, you rest the head down, and then see, can you just roll from side to side? Trying um, to keep my head very relaxed, I'm not thinking of lifting the head, it does lift, comes, or rather comes away a little bit as I transfer over. side to side. Great. Once you've done that, please come to lie on your back. And notice, notice how that all feels. Can you sense a change in the shoulders, how they're resting, the arms? What about the neck and the eyes? Roll them from side to side. So once you've done that, once you've uh, scanned yourself again, slowly come up to um, sit and to standing. And then in standing, take a moment to notice how, how it feels. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, I went through it fairly quickly for the purposes of the recording. Um, there are lots of other Feldenkrais lessons about the neck and shoulders, and I'll be um, sharing some of those with you in the in the future. The thing about Feldenkrais lessons it is often they each lesson can tell a story, and it's built up of um, a particular sequences. Um, but once you've learnt 
the principles, say behind a, um, a lesson, this lesson for example, what I like to do is I like to take my favourite bits and put them together in various patterns or sequences um, because I know they, um, what they do to help me feel good. So if I've got a, I've got a stiff neck, if I've been working and um, just I can feel something tightening up, it's um, a great thing to do just to lie down on the floor and um, use some of those movements that you found to have um, helped to um, soften and free a particular area. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the Christmas present. Merry Christmas and see you in the new year.